Friends in Christ, good morning. good morning. I think Peter already went over most of the announcements of the different events that are coming up and also uh, requests to uh, make sure that we have uh, uh, coverage for our coffee hour in, on, on Sunday mornings. But there are just two things. Um, just wanted to let the congregation know that this year uh, we, we usually have a, a camp Sunday where we in, 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 in invite representatives from Crossroads Camp to come and spend the Sunday with us and share with us a little bit about uh, the ministry of Camp Cross. We're going to do sort of like a little bit of an in-house thing for Camp Sunday. So um, the day is going to be uh, it's going to be on uh, Cinco de Mayo, May fifth, Sunday, May fifth, and uh, the, the the day or that that Sunday we're going to be talking about. Uh, 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 Crossroads Camp and, and, and the Ministry of Crossroads Camp uh, is sort of like do it in-house because uh, many of us know about Camp Crossroads and experience Camp Crossroads and contribute to Camp Crossroads. So we're going to do that sort of like in-house this year rather than inviting uh, reps uh, from Crossroads to come and to be with us on that Sunday. Uh, the second thing is, Peter, are we, we, are, are we singing the song? Yes. The, okay. It's in the bulletin. Okay, okay. I, I, I did not copy that well, <laughs> but it is 780, I believe, which is Shepherd Me, O God, verses 1, 2, and 5. It okay. is marked and in the bulletin. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Just wanted to make, make sure of that. So when the song when it comes time for the psalm, uh, we'll be uh, we'll be singing the psalm, uh, wonderful psalm to sing because it is Good Shepherd Sunday. Amen. So, friends in Christ, I invite you to please stand as you're able. Button up, the choir is going to sing. Oh, the choir is going to sing. Thank you for your calisthenics. Oh, Come on uh, up, choir. The choir is going to sing. Again, the music is listed in the back <laughs> of the bullet. You can stand too if you want, but the choir is going to sing.
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the wellspring of grace, our Easter rebirth and our joy. Amen. Amen. Look, here is water. Here is our water of new life. Hallelujah. Immersed in the promises of baptism, let us give thanks for what God has done for us. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your voice thundered over the deep water, became the essence of life. Adam and Eve beheld Eden's verdant rivers. The ark carried your creation through the flood into a new day. Miriam led the dancing as your people passed through the sea into freedom's land. In the desert pool, the Ethiopian eunuch entered your boundless baptismal life. Look, here is water. Here is the water of life. Hallelujah. At the river, your beloved son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you opened the floodgates of your reconciling love, freeing us to live as Easter people. We rejoice with glad hearts, giving all honor and praise to you through the risen Christ, our source of living water, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Look, here is water. Here is our water of life. Hallelujah.
O Lord Christ, good shepherd of the sheep, you seek the lost and guide us into your fold. Feed us, and we shall be satisfied. Heal us, and we shall be whole. Make us one with you, for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. In the congregation, you may be seated for the reading and hearing of God's Word this morning. And by 
by this we will know that we are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before him. Whenever our hearts condemn us, for God is greater than our hearts, and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God, and we receive from him whatever we ask, because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he has commanded us. All who obey his commandments abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this we know that he abides in us, by the spirit that he has given us. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Thanks. 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 about Jesus being a good, like a good shepherd. We hear how he lays down his life for his sheep. And we also read, for this reason the Father loves him, because Jesus lays down his life. Now usually on Good Shepherd Sunday, I, I would preach on Jesus being the Good Shepherd. But for some reason, my attention this year has been drawn to the second reading this morning, where we read in that first, uh, uh, that first John reading, it says, right at the beginning of the first verse that we read, it begins, we know love by this, that Jesus laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. That's what we read in our second reading from 1 John, the third chapter. 
Now, for those of you who may not be familiar with First John, I just what I just want to give you a little bit of a brief background of what's happening in First John. First John was actually um, is actually a, 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 a the words that we read from First John were actually written like about sixty or seventy years after Jesus' his, his 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 death, his resurrection, and his ascension. And many of you probably know that the, the majority of the New Testament, beginning with the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and, and, and the remainder of the New Testament are, are comprised of, of comprised of letters written by the Apostle Paul. But that's not the case with 1 John. 1 John is believed to actually have been written by the same possibly by the same person or someone in relation to the person who wrote the Gospel of St. John. And 1 John really is, it, it's, it's, not, it's not a letter. It reads more like, it reads more like a sermon. It's, 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 it's a, a sermon that's, uh, that's spoken to, uh, to a, a, a people a, a congregation of people that, that's going through some some sort of turmoil, uh, some sort of some sort of uh, uprising with, within the within the body of the church, and what what's going on in, in this reading in in in, in, in First John? Or there 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 are some false teachers that are going around in the community. And, and they're saying that, you know what? They're, they're saying that, that Jesus, the, 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 the Son of God, uh, only appeared, he only appeared to be human. What they were saying is that Jesus was purely a, a, a spiritual being. And he's sort of like, he didn't have, um, well, he had human qualities, but he just... So like appeared to, 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 be, uh, to be a human being. It's, there, there's a, a, a word in, in the, the church in, or in church history that you uh, may have heard uh, called Gnosticism. And Gnosticism was a, 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 a teaching that was totally opposite of the basics of the Christian faith. And this Gnostic teaching that was going around in 1 John was a was a, a, a Gnostic teaching called docetism. And docetism talked about that Jesus, he just, he just, uh, he just appeared to, to, be, to be a human being. They, they also, uh, these false teachers, talked about this, that the, the spiritual life was much greater than a person's moral life. They would, talk, they would talk about spiritual knowledge being greater than moral rules. And that's why, that's why the, the, the writer of 1 John begins by saying right in that 16th verse that we know love by this, that Jesus Christ, the truly human Jesus Christ, laid down his life for us. He laid down his life for us. And that we should lay down our lives. He says we ought to lay down our lives for one, for one another. Sounds a little bit familiar, doesn't it? We just heard that same type of language in our, in our, uh, in our gospel reading from the 10th chapter of John's Gospel, where we read about uh, Jesus being like a good shepherd who lays down his life for the sheep. But there's something else going on in, in, that I'd like to sort of focus on, uh, in, because it's the second, well, like the second part of this 16th verse. It's that it talks about Jesus laying down his life, but he also, the writer of John says that, uh, because 
because of Jesus' divine love for us and laying down his life for us, we ought to lay down our lives for one another. We ought to lay down our lives for one another. Have you ever wondered what it would look like for you to lay down your life for another person? I mean, what, 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 what would that look like for, for, for you and me to lay down our lives for another individual? What would that look like? Several years ago, or I should say many years ago, I did my internship. In seminary, you have to do what's called an internship, where you sort of, you sort of work with a, a pastoral supervisor for anywhere between a, a nine, and, or nine and 12 months. And you do all sorts of things in, in the church. You may uh, visit the sick, teach Bible study. You might preach on Sunday on, on occasions. And I can remember my pastoral supervisor, his, 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 name, his, his name was, nickname was Rocky, Rocky. And, then he, and, and he, folks would, would ask him, well, how did you get that name Rocky? And, and he would point to his nose and it was sort of like a little disjointed. And he said, well, when I, you know, I always wanted to be a boxer, but once I got hit my nose and it went like this. <laughs> I knew my boxing career was up, so he says, that's why they called, you know, Rocky Marciano, I guess that's why they called him Rocky. But Rocky, Rocky always had a, a, a saying or a motto that went like this. He would always say, you got to let go. You got to let go. And I can, re I can remember in, in, in the nine, nine or ten months that I worked as an, as an intern in that congregation, it would, be, it would be no failing that there would be some point in, in Rocky's sermon on Sunday where he would say, you got to let go. <laughs> you got to let go, folks. And, and you see, Rocky, by saying that you got to let go, he wasn't talking about uh, letting go of things like smoking or drinking or, or, or cussing. No, Rocky, when he was talking about when he was talking about letting go, he was talking about letting go of, I, I like to say, that, that, that unholy trinity. Letting go of, 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 of thinking that, that the world revolves around me, myself, and I. The three, those, those three, unholy trinity. And, and, and what, what Rocky was really saying is, when you lock, gotta let go, he was talking about he was talking about letting go of things like our ego. When he was talking about things about letting go, he was talking about letting go of things like pride. When he was talking about letting go, he was talking about letting go of things like 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 privilege. Those those were the things that Rocky, when he talked about letting go, he was he was he was inviting the folks to, to let go of ego, let go of pride, let go of, 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 of privilege. I guess you could say, let go of all of those things that, 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 that keep us ha from having a closer relationship with one another and a closer relationship with God. I, I mean, it's, imagine, imagine, if we lived in a society where people would just let go, they would let go of the, that, that me, myself, and I, and it's all about me thinking. Imagine if we lived in a society where people truly, truly let go of their ego, pride, privilege, and prejudice. Letting go. Letting go. In this reading from 1 John, John is teaching and inviting his followers to, to embody what the church really is. The body of the risen Christ here in our world. That's what the, that's what the church is. That's what we are in today. 
We are the embodiment of the, of the risen Christ living here in Red Bank, Monmouth County, New Jersey, the United States. Just as Christ laid down his life for us, sisters and brothers in Christ, we are to lay down our lives for one another. And what does that look like? It, 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 it means that we are to lay down our own lives. It means that we are to let go. Because, friends in Christ, love isn't love unless it's truly lived out. And love isn't love until it's truly put into Christ-like action. Thanks be to God. Amen. Sisters and brothers in Christ, you got to let go. Amen.
preserve the health of biomes and ecosystems, inspire scientists, researchers, conservation organizations, and all people entrusted with the task of caring for creation, that we may be better stewards of the world around us. God of grace, hear our prayer. Almighty God, lead nations and communities to share resources, cooperate in solving conflicts, and listen to the wisdom of indigenous peoples. Help all those with power to share it and to use such power for good. God of grace, hear our prayer. Loving God, protect the very young and the very old, those living without housing, victims of domestic abuse, and all who live in chronic illness or compromised immune systems. Guide communities to actively care for people who are vulnerable. God of grace, hear, hear our prayer. Gracious God, help us in all communities of faith to listen for your voice. Call us away from things that distract us from following you. Invite us more deeply to love and serve people who are lonely, isolated, and on the margins. God of grace, hear our prayer. We pray, O oh God, that you give strength and courage to those who are sick, shut in, and for all in need. We especially pray for Phyllis, Gail, Terry, Linda, Loris, Joe, Elena, Dean, Allison, Laura, Fiona, Maria, Kathy, Michelle, Daniel. We also pray for all people living with mental illness, especially for the family of the man that set himself in fire in New York City last week. People in the southwest, uh, southeast and midwest living in the aftermath of destructive weather conditions. <coughs> People around the world living in places of violence and war, especially Ukraine, Israel, and Palestine. All victims of gun violence in schools, workplaces, and homes. Refugees and immigrants and those who come to their aid. The unity of this church and its mission. Those struggling with grief, sickness, or injury. Those who are lonely and have no one to pray for them. God of grace, Living God, we give thanks for our ancestors in faith. Strengthen us to share the good news in our own day. God of grace, hear our prayer. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love through Jesus the Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. And now, sisters and brothers in Christ, may the peace of Christ be with the, you and those who you love and you care for. And now, may we take a few moments to share Christ's peace with you. God's peace be with you. Thank you. God's peace.
sisters and brothers in Christ, we will uh, continue our service with the celebration of our Lord's Supper, Holy Communion. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior, Jesus the Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has de destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter, and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. <laughs>
Um, but please do join in singing the communion hymns. They are on page 14 and 15 of the bulletin. You can also find them in the hymnal as well, or there's large copies at the entrances of the church. But please join in singing.
risen Christ, I invite you to please stand if you're able. And now may the body and blood of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, the Good Shepherd, may it bless you and keep you and strengthen you and always give you God's grace. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Shepherding God, you have prepared the table before us and nourished us with your love. Send us forth from this banquet to proclaim your goodness and share the abundant mercy of Jesus, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. 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 And I just want to invite the congregation to just uh, just to please remain standing. And before I share the blessing with you, I know that we have two birthdays that we need to celebrate. You, have you ever heard of, of, of um, uh, uh, a brother from a different mother? Ever, have you ever, that, that saying, brother from a different mother. Well, t today is... is, is is uh, Carrie Oswald's birthday, and it's also Joan McFarlane's birthday. They were born on the same day, and I'm not going to say what age they are, but they are the same age. <laughs> so, uh, can we sing happy birthday to Carrie and Joan? We take from other hymnals um, when it's legal, <laughs> and this is legal. Um, it's This Far by Faith, which is the African-American hymnal that's produced by the Evangelical Lutheran Church. So if you look for 151 in the red hymnal, you're not going to find it. <laughs> um, so this, our closing hymn is TFF, This Far by Faith. It's our hymnal from a different congregation, um, but it is still ELCA. And it's uh, He Leadeth Me, which we've done many times during our summer singing, uh, and that is in the bullet and only on page 16. Thank you. Friends in Christ, I invite you to receive the blessing. Christ is risen. Alleluia. The God of resurrection power and the Christ of unending joy and the spirit of Easter hope bless you now and always. Amen. Amen.